Thanks for being there. Uh, we're almost at the end of the session, so uh, it probably has been a long way. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, what we're doing in user space networking with uh, RDMA. So it, it's not really about RDMA per se. You will see that in the course of the talk. Uh, my name is Ben Wagan. I'm working at Cisco, and I'm working at, at, on VPP. <laughs> So for uh, those who missed the excellent talk about Quick from, uh, from my colleagues, um, a few words about VPP. VPP is a uh, user space um, software uh, networking platform. Uh, and it strives to be uh, very, very fast and have a lot of features like you know, tunneling, routing, switching, all those kind of stuff, and even uh, layer 4 like TCP, UDP, and, and now Quick. Uh, but at the, at the very bottom of our stack, we need to receive and transmit packets, and we need to do that efficiently. And uh, from time to time, we, um, we ask ourselves the question, OK, do we need to write our own network driver for this, for, uh, to do that? Um, and sometimes we, we have to. Uh, so first, why do we do user space networking? Uh, mostly because of uh, performance, but also because uh, it allows us to um, update more easily network functions in the field. Uh, if you have some of your networking functions uh, that you, you need to update, you don't necessarily want your wall host to be down uh, because you need to reboot to start a new kernel. Um, so this is the features that your space networking brings us. Um, and, and then the next question is, okay, why do you need to write your own network driver? Especially as, um, as now, you know, you, we have the, the DPDK, which, which have a, a lot of drivers uh, already available. And we do use DPDK a lot in VPP. Uh, we rely on it for a, a lot of drivers. But sometimes for specific drivers, we want to go a little bit further uh, in terms of getting better performance and ease of use. Uh, and in that case, we need to go to develop our own, uh, our own network driver. And uh, this is an example here where we did uh, a native development. It was for the um, uh, Intel XL710, so I thought, uh, you know, 40 gig uh, Intel NICs, uh, where by developing our own native drivers, we gain about 25% uh, performance boost on some workloads like IP4 forwarding uh, with uh, 2 million routes. Uh, so that's, that's something that, which is important for us. And one of the main reasons of that is because when you're using an external driver, uh, you have, so, like DPTK, for example, you might have some translation happening between metadata. Uh, this is actually something that even the DPDK has, uh, for example, with XDP uh, the, uh, that they presented in an earlier talk. So when you get a packet from a, another driver, you usually need to convert the, you know, the, the bits describing your packet, uh, such as the length of the packet, uh, is uh, the checksum good, this kind of stuff. Uh, in DPP, we have our own representation. In DPDK, uh, they have their own representation. In XDP, you have another one. So you, you need to translate between that, and that costs some performance. Um, that being said, it's not always an easy decision because uh, first, usually when you do user space networking and with your own user space network drivers, you're losing integration with the kernel. And that's a pity because uh, you're using, you know, your favorite tools like uh, ATH tool and blah blah blah, and it, it makes things harder to deploy, harder to monitor, etc. So that's that's uh, that's one of the problem. Um, another thing is what we really care in VPP, for example, in our case, is we want to receive and transmit packet efficiently. We don't care about initializing the device, configuring it, uh, making it work, but we have to. And unfortunately, it happens that most of the time, it's the most complex, uh, most complex parts of the work. Uh, when you write the drivers, there is a lot of code which goes, and a lot of um, uh, data sheet uh, reading, which goes into, OK, how should I initialize it to make it work? And finally, 
some things that we should not forget is, well, hardware is hard, uh, and I will share with you some, uh, some story later on about that. But that's, that's basically the, our problem statement, let's say. So, RDMA. Um, RDMA stands for Remote Di Direct Memory Access. Um, it was uh, designed originally for message passing and data transfer, especially for the HPC or storage applications. So it's a, a very efficient way to move data around uh, in a network. And um, it has evolved uh, to support Ethernet transport. Uh, so now we have uh, RDMA uh, protocols, which runs on uh, Ethernet and IP, such as IWARP and Rocky. And key properties of RDMA is, uh, so you have some hardware offloads, it's kernel bypass, meaning that you get the data directly from the NIC without having to go through the kernel and sometimes uh, have data copy, etc. cetera. Um, so it's also zero copy and it's uh, usually very high performance. So it's it it's looked like a, a good uh, a good thing to use for for networking, especially for user space networking. And on the uh, right side of the slide, I try to picture a very simplified way of how the RDMA stack uh, looks like. So on the top you have the RDMA NIC, uh, the hardware in blue. Uh, in the middle you have the kernel, which basically does all the configurations and control. And at the bottom, you have the user space. So you have a library in user space, which is called libibverbs, and which is uh, used to uh, talk to the kernel, but also to the hardware to move data around. And at the bottom, you have the application. In our case, it's VPP, but it, it can be anything. Um, and um, the nice thing is uh, with RDMA, the data move directly from the uh, hardware to the user space software. So th there is no... Uh, data touching uh, in the kernel at all. Uh, that said, we are not that interested in RDMA itself in VPP, at least for now. Um, we're more interesting, uh, interested in Ethernet packets, and uh, it happens that uh, uh, RDMA has been extended for uh, Ethernet support somehow. Um, and uh, they introduce a, a new kind of uh, queues that you can use to send and receive internet packets, which is called uh, queue per type row packets. Um, and the nice thing about it is it relies on packet steering to move pack to, uh, let's say, to steer packets between different queues. So that allows the kernel uh, network device uh, to uh, to stay uh, with its own set of queues for uh, receiving and transmitting packets, while your applications get a different set of queues, and uh, your application can also receive and transmit packets, uh, and the uh, hardware will act actually um, select which uh, queues it needs to uh, send packets to based on flow you program. So that allows you to have your user space applications having a direct access to the network hardware um, while retaining your, your kernel net device. So you, your net device does not disappear suddenly because you, you start your application. Um, and as the, the, the packet steering is, is based on what you want to program there, um, you can implement you know, uh, things like similar to MacVLAN or IPVLAN. So you can say, oh, my application is interested in all the packets with uh, this specific destination Mac, for example. If you, uh, or my application is interested uh, by all the packets with this specific IP. And you, you can go even further up the stack, if you, if you will. It depends on the capabilities of the hardware, basically. So nice model. And this next nice model is actually quite easy to use, at least if you, um, if you use uh, libib verb. Uh, so here is a, a simplified example, but the full example, uh, you can have a look at a simple but uh, fully working example on, on GitHub here. Uh, the, the full example is like 200 lines of code, so it's, it's not very complex, right? And it's a little, depending on your hardware, uh, your mileage may vary, but typically for me, it allows me to send like 20 million packets per second with one CPU. 
Uh, so it's, it's not bad for, for a, a simple, stupid uh, test. So the way it works is you just get a handle on the device you're interested in, and this, this is all user space, right, with some help from, from the kernel here. Uh, then you initialize your queues. So uh, RDMA has a concept of queue pairs. So you basically get queues to uh, push the packets and queues to get the results of what you do. And the same is true for receiving packets. You get queues to uh, push your descriptors to uh, tell the NIC where it, it must uh, put the packets you're interested in. And completion queues, again, to uh, get notified when uh, new packets are coming. Um, and then you just uh, push your uh, work queue elements, which, uh, which are like IOVs, uh, IO vectors, and you do that in a loop. And that's about it. So that's pretty cool. You can go a little bit deeper with direct verbs. So again, it's an extension in IB verbs, which allows you to you do the same thing uh, as previously, but you just get the direct access to the hardware rings. So instead of going through the mediation of the libIB verb to uh, get your packets, uh, you go directly to the DMA rings, which is really great because in that case, you don't have any metadata translation anymore. You just get the raw packets given to you by the NIC. So that's pretty cool. Uh, an example for us, what we, we first developed uh, an IB version for, uh, for uh, the, the driver. And yeah, it gives us around 20 million packets per second uh, for a, a layer two cross connect. So a layer two cross connect is just you move packet around between two ports, but you check that the uh, you know Ethernet headers etc are uh, well formed. So you you're still touching the the header of the packet, but you don't do much. Uh, so it gives us around 20 million packets per second. Next step is direct verbs. So going to for the uh, hardware rings. And yeah, while doing that, I actually uh, tried to, while well, I was trying to debug my drivers, I saw that the NIC could uh, give me some hardware traces. I tried to enable that and I almost broke it. So that's why you need to uh, be careful about uh, uh, when you're doing hard, uh, very low level development with hardware. And yeah, the next step we'll we will like to add our support for things like checksum offloads and TSO. So in conclusion, what I would like to say is, uh, as a user space networking developer, we really like this model. We like the fact that we don't need to write any code to initialize a NIC. That's great. Uh, we like the fact that uh, we are not stealing the NIC from uh, the kernel. That's, that's really cool, too. And of course, we really like the fact that it, it gives us a great performance. But uh, these are some limitations. First, it's uh, RDMA, so it's restricted to RDMA-capable NICs. And more precisely right now, um, it's something that Melanox came up with, uh, and uh, thanks to them for, for that great technology. Uh, it, it works really well, but, well, there's only Melanox for now. So if those vendors could also support that, we would be uh, very happy about it. Uh, and the, the, the final thing is, it's a little bit outside of my uh, domain knowledge, but I'm wondering, okay, could, uh, could we apply the same kind of uh, features to other, with other mechanism? For example, maybe VFIO MDEV could allow us to get, you know, uh, we don't touch the NIC for initialization because we don't care about that, but we uh, get direct access to, to the rings. Um, uh, maybe AFXDP also could help us in there. So right now, my, my understanding of AFXDP is you still have some metadata conversions between what the kernel gets and what it gives you. So that means that you, you, you get some decreased performance because of that. But maybe, maybe we could use that also as a foundation to, to have something similar. So I don't know. That's, that's just, you know, food for thought. And, and that's about it. And I don't know if if there is uh, if there is any question. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
So the question is, do we use the, uh, this to send a packet over the RDMA stack, so like IWARP or Rocky, or do we use that to, to send raw Ethernet, a standard Ethernet packet? So this is actually the, the second. Uh, we, we don't use at all RDMA protocols per se. We're just using the RDMA infrastructure to send and receive raw Ethernet. There is no IWARP, no Rocky there. It's just using the infrastructure which is already there, but instead just sending Ethernet packets. Yeah. Why did you try to write uh, your own implementation of uh, a... Sorry, why did you try to, 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 to use the direct verify yourself and did not use the GTPK implementation? Okay. It already exist and already debugged and... Right, right. Works. Yes, uh, well, the, the, the reason is mostly because of this. So the... Um, yeah, but, but performance in GTBK, is, I assume that it already has uh, the maximum, maximum, maximum variable performance. So sure, if, if, from, you can fit, if you can fit in the DPDK uh, metadata format, and etc. The, the issue we have with VPP is it predates DPDK by like 10 years. And so we have our own uh, buffer metadata formats, and we can't change that easily. I mean, it's, it would be basically a complete rewrite of the whole code base, which is not uh, doable. And so it means that no matter what we do, we need to pay the tax of converting RTA, RTE and buff formats to our own uh, metadata formats. Uh, and so you, you have an example here for the uh, Intel XL710. Uh, the DPDK driver for the Intel uh, XL710, I'm sure, has, has the greatest performance you can get, right? But when we integrate it into VPP because of this metadata tra uh, translation and, and blah, 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 we're losing performance on the table. So that's, that's one of the points. The other point is the ease of use, which we, we found that DPDK can be quite picky about, uh, about uh, what it needs to run, uh, like, you know, oh, it, it really wants huge pages and this kind of stuff, which is not always easy to get in, uh, you know, containerized environment, etc. And so that's, that's another um, thing we, we try to overcome with that. Didn't you chat? Sorry, we, we need to kind of no. switch to the next speaker. Thank, Thank you. you.